Hey there, this is Nils Beardfoot and today I want to show you how to make these Viking style leather bracers. Let's jump right into it. Print out your pattern in the size that is fitting for you. Definitely make a paper model first to make sure it's in the correct size before you invest your leather. Cut out your leather in more manageable pieces and then you can start tracing all the edge lines on the leather and start cutting it out in detail. I'm using here uh, about 3.5 mm thick batch tanned leather which is around 9 ounces. Also we need a strap for the runes. Moisten your leather from both sides completely with water. You can do it under the tap or use a sponge. When wedge tanned leather is wet it is moldable and you can trace through the paper the lines for the leather carving and also all the holes on it. When the leather got most of its original color back but is still cool on the touch it is time that we can start using our swivel knife to cut along these marked lines for the ornaments and use stamps and a hammer to get imprints on the leather. I start here with the backgrounder for the background and after that I go with a beveler along the cut lines to get a 3D imprint. For the runes I got special rune stamps but you also can simply use your swivel knife to get them in. The moisture content of the leather is really the key to get a nice imprint into the leather. It's kinda like the temperature of a smith on the metal. When it's too dry you don't get a good imprint inside and you have to use a lot of force and it's not that deep and if it's too wet it's, it's mushy and you, you don't get these clear and crispy lines that you want. Which stamps exactly you use is totally up to you, but you should have thought about it already in advance. Since this shall be armor, I use my swivel knife to get in some cuts to simulate battle marks. You may punch your holes now or after dying. In this case I did before and after dying since I forgot that I usually do it afterwards so I did some already in advance. To get the leather a little bit roughened up in the look I use the rough side on my stone plate and hammer my leather against it to get the imprint of the stone into the leather. Now you can bevel the edges. When you use thicker leather, like I do here, which is about 3.5 mm, you have to bevel it from both sides. This will make the burnishing later on easier and nicer. Now it's time to dye. In this case here I use a water-based Java brown leather dye. In the end I wasn't really satisfied with the look, so I changed it afterwards. You will notice that. If you're wondering what this little pyramid is, uh, if you ever knocked over a die can you will know what it is for. For the runes I chose a black base coat. You can also use a common brush to get your die on the leather but you will only make sure that you don't have too much dye on your brush when putting it on the leather, else it might float around on areas you don't want. You can use common acrylic paint 
to paint the leather and later on with the resists it will seal it. So here we go with the resist. I put on two coats and let it dry completely before I do any other antique jello. And on the areas with the acrylic paint I very carefully put it, the resist on since it can wash away the acrylic paint. With the edges also moistened by the antique gel, I can use the drying time to burnish the edges. This will make them really smooth and nice looking. Here I punch all the remaining holes along the edge for the edge weaving. When you punch your holes is up to you, but if you do it earlier you might run into trouble with your dye since it can run through the holes and dye the leather on the other side. If this is not a problem, it doesn't matter for you. When the resist is completely dry, and I mean it, you can put on some antique gel, will make your leather carving pop much more. When you've put it everywhere, just take a paper towel and wipe away the excess antique gel. The resist will make sure it does not get into the leather completely, only into the deep areas. To seal off the antique gel, I put on another coat of resist. Just try to make sure it does not pool. For the metal effect, I use a combination of resist and perlex powder, which is usually used for dyeing resolin. I dip the brush on the resist and into the powder and put a little bit on paper to remove some, and then I use it just like paint. Polishing it a little bit before I put on some antique gel here as well. And then put another coat of resist to seal it and that's it. Now we can start sewing the elbow area. Wax thread comes in here very handy. I just go through all the holes and tighten it once or twice to make it really tight and then sew back. Make a knot at the end, cut out the remaining thread and use a lighter to melt them together. For the edge weaving we pull the strap once almost completely through, then go to the next hole and create a loop, but before we tighten this one we go through this loop once again, then we tighten the first loop with the end in, and then we tie on the second loop. And again, we go through the next hole, we create a loop, we go through the loop once again, create a second loop, tighten then the first loop, and then the second one. Again, going through the hole, creating a loop, Top grain always upwards. Then go through the loop, tighten the first loop and tighten the second loop. YouTube magic! At the end you want to pull the end of the leather strap through some of the loops you've done before and pull them really tight. I brought the pieces already into their rough form and now I start putting in the loops.
bringing the pieces together, I clamp them together first and I mark where I have to punch holes into the base piece. You don't need to mark them all now, but some at the beginning and the end to make a steady construction. Then punch the holes. This way I can use rivets to loosely fit both pieces together and mark where I have to rough up the leather and put on the glue. Now I roughen up the leather so the contact cement will stick better. Talking of which, I put on the contact cement on both sides I want to glue together and leave them for about 5 minutes. This is actually pretty old contact cement so it did not stick that well, but it did its job anyway. Once again, the holes that I have already punched come in handy here. With some rivets I fit both pieces loosely together while getting it into the correct position and hold it there. I press and hammer both pieces now together. I punch holes now through both pieces and use rivets this time to fix them permanently together. After you've done that to all the other pieces as well, you can use a strap, I'm using here a rubber band, to get through the loop and make it hold tight to your forearm. And that's it, you're done. Note that I'm wearing a wristband underneath the braces, which makes them much more comfortable to wear. If you don't want that, just make sure that you cut out your leather a little bit tighter around. I hope you like this. Be sure to check out my other tutorials and also my patterns, link down below. See you guys next time. Ciao!